What's up guys and welcome to my channel Flame Rover 4. In this issue 10 we are going to be building the frame. So yes we've actually got to the frame already so it, it kind of feels quite quick that we got here and it's it's um, gonna make it look like a car so I'm quite excited. This video was a 30 minute video and I have managed to get it down to 5 minutes 28 so I'm actually pretty psyched about that. I'm hoping that you can enjoy the build as much as I did when I was building it, watching it as I did, you know, as a, I was building it because it's it's really good. I'm just going to take it out of the packaging just so you guys can see what it comes with. When I saw it in there, or see it in there, I was actually really excited about it because it looks really well made. It's really heavy. Uh, it's it's definitely worth the money. You started to I started to think, is this worth the money? Like, am I getting what I pay for? And you know, with the frame. I feel like I am. I mean, it's an $8.99 issue, and I mean, when you get like a wheel in there or something, then obviously you, you do start to worry. And look, as you can see, there is another screwdriver. I, w I do use this screwdriver to start building it, but I have got other ones as well. They don't last that long, and the threads do start to go. But like I say, if you've got ones that are bigger, then obviously... Um, I mean, I know all the screw heads are supposed to be the same, but if you use a bigger screwdriver on th some of the, the bigger head ones, you you can get them in that just that little bit better when you're doing things like the wheels and stuff like that. So remember to get everything out. So so what I tend to do is get everything that I need, and then I start to do start to do the build once everything is complete. So I mean I I had sorted all the screws out. It took me a little while, so what I had to do is I sort of I I get the little numbers, put them in the little tub, and then I put, I tip the screws in with those ones. I mean, it might be a bit dangerous because obviously they can get mixed up, but it's easy to use the magnetic screwdriver to grab them as you're holding something. So say you're holding something together, it's just so much easier when you're doing that. So obviously we had to use all the bits that were built previously. We start with the suspension. So it has got left and right on there, so you can't get it wrong. I'm not too sure whether you could put it together wrong. I don't think you can. But as you can see here, it is, I mean, I haven't shown you a, a zoomed-in detail of it, but it has got left and right on it, so you, you can't really get it wrong. As long as You have to always look at a car, because obviously I work with cars, as in you're the driver. So if it's the left side, then it's going to be the passenger side, and if it's the right side then obviously the right side is the right side. As you can see, they fold down nicely. My ones are quite um, stiff to fold down, but they, they flip up quite well. I mean, they're not, mine are not flimsy. I've heard people say that theirs are really flimsy and they don't, you know, they move really hard, but m mine move really well, I think. I think if you wanted to, you could obviously lube up the screws with maybe like a little bit of Vaseline or some WD-40, but I don't think it needs it. I think that once the frame's there and everything is together, we won't have the trouble of um, it not manoeuvring how it should. So I'm now installing the steering rack, guys. So that took, um, I think it took three screws on the top to hold down this top plate. Uh, and then you have to put in um, the the steering rack connects via the, uh, you know, the, the, the steering piece there. So obviously where it goes on to the... I think it's like a wishbone or something. So it's like, or track quad end. It might be just like the track quad end. So it goes on to the track quad end. It's, it's really well made. I mean, everything is so, so detailed. And I mean, I, I was just having too much fun building this. Right, so here we go, putting the wheels on. I mean, with the wheels, as you can see, I'm taking them off and putting them on again, just because they they didn't feel like they were on strong enough. So I went to a bigger screwdriver, which is what I told you about. And then they seemed to be absolutely fine. They didn't wobble. Uh, they maneuver really well, which I'm just about to show you now. So they they move like that when you move those. I I can move it with the um, the steering the steering rack itself, but I mean it it doesn't move as well. But obviously it's got to be connected to a few more things, so it probably will work better. But I mean I think it's pretty good. I mean I hope that the two screws that are in there can support the whole car. The wheels fold down and they seem pretty level, don't they? So. Yeah, um, I think they're pretty level, to be fair. It does what it's supposed to do. Everything's gone together well. I know a few people are modifying theirs, adding a few more things on and stuff like that. But I want to keep mine how it came out of the packaging. I'm a, I'm a kind of person that likes it to be factory. So if, it, if that's how Eagle Moss have designed it and that's how they want it to be, then that is how I want it to be built. You know, So I want it to be built exactly how it is. 
uh, in the pictures. So no modifications for me. I was going to do it, but I've decided not to. I'm just going to show you what's in the next issue. So we have to come in the next issue, the engine support. So that's the engine support to go onto the frame itself, which is really cool. We're just going to put away everything, get out a couple of those little plastic things to put issue 10 into the binder. Once we've done that, guys, we're finished. So I'm really excited about the frame. It's really good. Please uh, click that subscription button, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.